Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Um, we are about to go live. I think we are live. Um, I'll just give it a minute here to warm up. There we go. I think it just kicked in. All right, cool. So um, we're going to do a good one today. I think it's a good one. Pretty, pretty confident it's going to be a good one. Uh, we're going to get into some nitty gritty here on um, the top three traits that my most, Im my most important, my most successful clients have and they do, okay? Uh, and this is important stuff, guys, because we're not really talking about nutrition. We're not really talking about exercise. We're talking about mindset. We're talking about your belief systems. We're talking about the identity you have around your coping mechanisms that you've created over the years to deal with stress. We're talking about your level of surrender and therefore defensiveness when it comes to challenging your identity around food and around um, yourself and your, and your belief systems. So hold your hats, folks. <clears throat> Let's jump on in, shall we? Before we do, actually, um, I want to just give something a little bit anecdotal for you guys. I I um, did something very recent, very similar recently, um, where I put myself through a transformation, right? Like I've been a trainer for 16 years and I've always exercised. And when I was a lot younger in my 20s, I could exercise like three or four hours a day because I had time. And it didn't require me to um, watch what I ate, right? I mean protein shakes, regular food, you know, I just did what I wanted to do. I ate however I felt like eating, um, but I was just exerting myself so much that I was always able to stay pretty fit. Well, fast forward 10 years and here I am sitting in this chair, talking to this computer 12 hours a day at least. And so guess what? I have become the thing that a lot of my clients told me about 10 years ago that I just couldn't even understand. I'm like, well, why don't you just exercise more? Well, you know, I've evolved in my thinking and I've realized that you can't, you can't out train a poor diet, right? And you can't improve your diet until you break some belief systems and you surrender to the reality of where you're at in your life and what's required to get you from where you are to where you want to be. So I found myself this year where I just wasn't very happy with my body. Not this year, actually last year. Um, you know, uh, May, June of 2020, I just wasn't thrilled with how my body was, was looking. Um, and as a trainer, I just realized I should probably, you know, do something about it. So I hired an accountability coach. I hired my own coach to put me through it. And um, I still work with them to this day because whether or not I know the answers isn't really the question. It's whether I'm going to do it. And I think that that's what I like to share with all my clients as well is that you can Google workouts, you know, you can Google nutrition that's never not been there, you know? You, there's never been more access to free information. Simultaneously, there's never been more people who are struggling with weight loss. So clearly there's, there's not a direct correlation between the amount of access we have to information and then the um, resulting effect of people losing weight. That's not actually true. So what's the difference then? What's the rub, man? The rub is that A, we need accountability, right? We need to know that someone's watching. Um, I think it's called the Townsend Principle. When you know someone's watching you, you change your behavior, right? Um, if no one's there to check on you, it's just human nature to start rounding corners and eventually fade off after about four or six weeks, which, which we'll get into here in a second. Um, so anywho, um, hired the coach. We went through my whole nutrition plan, got clear on what my goals were, and then set forth. and. It was freaking hard because I wasn't out of shape necessarily, but I also wasn't happy with the way my body was looking. And the reason was because I was eating dumb shit. I wasn't tracking my calories. I was going out too hard. On the, this was just eight months ago. And I've been a trainer for 15 years. I mean, I'm working, I've been working as a coach for 15, 16 years. And just eight months ago, I realized I needed my own coach. And this is, that's okay. And that's part of the mindset that we're gonna get into here that a lot of my successful clients possess. It's being okay with hiring a coach. It's being okay with admitting you don't have the answers. It's being okay with surrendering your belief systems. But it was challenging. And there was moments where I was feeling a lot of resistance 
to the change that this man was recommending I make, namely around my weekends and around what I felt I deserved. Well, newsflash, you don't deserve shit. You deserve what you get, right? You deserve what you get. And if we can just take responsibility and accept that reality, it makes life so much easier because we're not sitting there feeling like a victim. We're not blaming other people. We just realize that, hey, life, life is what we make of it. We create our own luck. We deserve exactly what we get. If we get something really great because we've earned it, then you deserve it. So that's the reality of it. So I've gone through this. I've experienced this on my own. I've had my own setbacks and challenges and I've had that friction inside of me that I had to become aware of and notice when I was being defensive around the change that the coach was suggesting I make. Now here we are, um, you know, nine months later and my body's completely transformed. I feel 100% better and I feel better being able to come to you guys now and give you this information, not just from some theoretical standpoint, but having actually gone through it on my own now and realizing what it takes. And it's not going to be a cakewalk and it's not going to be something that we can just um, look up online and then expect ourselves to, to follow through 100%, right? It's a mindset shift. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the top three traits of my most successful clients, all right? So... <clears throat> That little button never works. There we go. Okay, trick number one. This is a good one, guys. This is a biggie. The best people never stop doing the basics, right? Have you guys seen that Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix? What does everyone say about Michael Jordan? Is that he was the first one to show up and the last one to leave. The man has uh, five world championships, right? Best arguably ever. First one to show up, um, last one to leave. He never stopped practicing free throws. He never stopped working on his technique. He never stopped doing the basics. Serena Williams never stops practicing her backhand, right? That's why she's Serena Williams. The pros never stop doing the basics. Well, what are the basics? What are the basics? We're talking about health here, right? If I were to, if you, let me ask you this. If you were to go to your best friend and your, let's say your best friend was in need, right? Not that best friends ever come to us and ask for help, but let's just imagine, right? Your best friend comes to you in need and they go, I'm 50 pounds overweight. What do I need to do? What would you tell them? Well, hey man, you got to get off your butt. You got to start moving your body. You should probably stop to order and take out and switch to more like, you know, low calorie foods. And you should probably start weighing yourself so you can keep track. That's it. Those are the basics, right? It doesn't need to be sexy. I think we're stuck in this belief system, this mindset that we have to go search for this like Himalayan rock salt, this, this like Brazilian jungle berry that has these like exotic things that's going to all of a sudden be the answer to our problems. But that's that snake oil that we've been being sold for generations. Like when are we going to wake up? and realize there's no silver bullet. There's no quick fix. I don't care how fancy the diet sounds, keto, intermittent fasting, uh, whatever. You can still be fat if you eat keto. You can still gain fat if you're intermittent fasting. Like It's just the basics. We have to fundamentally understand your body burns off a certain amount of calories every day. right? If you eat over that calorie ceiling, you are going to gain body fat. That's how it works. Okay. The opposite's also true. So if you eat less than your body burns off, you will, you will uh, lose weight. Okay. Those are the basics, but how do we track that? Right? You get your calories, you get your macros, you get everything dialed in. And you just got to keep going, right? Because what happens is it's human nature to want to start rounding corners. After about four to six weeks, we get a little ahead of ourselves and we feel like we are more advanced than we actually are. We are at a level of, at that point, after like four or six weeks, you're at a level of what we call conscious competence, right? So you're at conscious competency. You're competent as long as you're hyper-focused. As long as you're laser-focused, you're competent. But you're not fluent yet. You don't have unconscious competence yet. 
it's not second nature to you yet. It's second nature to me, for example, because I've been doing this for 16 years. It's not second nature to you yet, most likely if you're in this group and you're looking for help. So you, you're at a level where you're either consciously incompetent, where you're finally aware of how incompetent you are, or you're at a place where you're consciously competent, where as long as you're paying a lot of attention, you can probably get the job done, but you have to stay focused, right? And so you have to keep drilling the basics. You have to be that Michael Jordan. You have to be that Serena Williams that never stops practicing the basics until, and even then, even when you reach a level of conscious, um, of unconscious competence, even when you reach that level, you still got to keep practicing the basics because it will slip if you let off, right? So never stop doing the basics because it is human nature to want to start to round corners, right? You got to get a little ahead of yourself. You get a little cocky. Ah, oh, I just lost 15 pounds. Look at me. I'm not, I don't need to measure my fruit. I can eyeball it. I don't need to put that on a food scale. I get it. Oh, well, I haven't weighed myself in a week, but I'm feeling fine. And then slowly but surely, your results start to unravel. Next thing you know, you've gained it back and you've lost momentum and you're like, ah, oh, damn. All right? Rookie mistake. Never stop doing the basics. When, in my experience, it's about the six-week mark. Right, so this second point here, the six week itch, it's a phenomenon. Everyone comes into my program hyper focused, yes, ready to rock and roll, so excited, so ready to, to fucking crush. Pardon my French. They're rolling, they're rolling, they're rolling, all of a sudden, midway around that six week mark, we just see something, something blows up, right? Something blows up. Ah, well, this is the crux this is the linchpin between the folks who follow through and the folks that succumb to the throes of life because you're not not going to have that right you're not not going to have issues in life that will throw you off track that is guaranteed my friend the question is not whether we can avoid those situations the whether is the question is how do we handle them when they come around because they will come around right and are you going to use that as an excuse to quit again? Or are you going to realize that this is just a moment? This is a challenge that if you overcome this, you create strength and trust in yourself to, to tackle a bigger one next time, right? So my successful clients who crush this, they, they let life's challenges come and go, but they don't react to it by wanting to throw their hands in the air and quit the program or go binge eat or you know, use these things as a trigger to go off track and to repeat the habits that got him them in the situation to begin with, right? And then, of course, they just keep repeating successful actions. It's boring. Hey, wait, hey, I'm sorry. Weight loss is boring because you have to do the same thing every day. It's not sexy. It's not going to be sexy. The, 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 the exciting, sexy variety life is what got you in a situation where you had to go on a weight loss program. So you, so you have to accept that like if we're going to do this, if we're going to get that weight off of you and change the script and change your patterns and behaviors, that there's going to be a sacrifice, there's going to be a trade-off and you have to just be okay with being a little boring for 8, 12, 16 weeks, however long it takes to get to your goal, recognize that you're going to have a 6 week to 8 week itch, you're going to have obstacles and it's going to be a little bit boring but when it's all done, and you're weighing in and you're fitting into clothes you haven't worn in years and everyone's complimenting you and you're getting attention from the opposite sex, was it worth that boring moment? Yeah, yeah it was. Don't get cute. My clients who are the most, they don't try to do their own thing. Oh, well, I really like I really like those things. I know that your meal plan said this, but I really like those. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of things that you like, <laughs> right? But um, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So I'm not asking for a life sentence here. I'm just asking for a period of time of discipline to do what you got to do when you got to do it whether you feel like it or not to get to your goal and that might mean a momentary sacrifice on drinking alcohol on the weekends or 
you know, having dessert after dinner. Things that we've done, or not, that, that's not even a good example, but like getting cute would be like, hey, I know that you said that this is the right meal plan, but I read online that for my body type, this is a better meal plan. And it's, it's like, you know, just trusting the process and, and, just, and just trusting that tinkering with things in the early stages is how, we, how the bomb blows up in our face, right? Don't tinker with shit. You have to, the, the ones that are the most successful, accept, surrender, commit, and drop all their own preconceived notions and realize that the reason that they are in my program is because they need help and they just accept the guidance and f follow through all the way. That is the essence of self-discipline, right? Doing what you have to do when you have to do it, whether you feel like that or not, right? So there we go. So that was number one. That was a long one. Number two, which I've harped on many times, you have to have a good enough is good enough attitude, right? And this kind of circles back around to when life inevitably comes at you. Like the reality, guys, your kids are going to get sick. You're going to get sick. You're going to have arguments with people. Your boss might be a dick one day. Maybe you're the boss and you're a dick one day. And you don't feel good about yourself because you yelled at somebody. Or you forget your food at home and then you have and then you have to, you're faced with an impossible decision. Do I not eat lunch or do I order in? Shoot. It's called life, guys. And we can't be so reactive. We can't let these things blow us up. Because what it does is it triggers us. And it triggers the old habits and patterns that keep us in this cycle of insanity, this loop, this vicious cycle that we are trying so desperately on a, in a conscious mind to break out of, yet in the throes of life, in the midst of the situation, we forget the bigger picture and we just continue to repeat these mistakes, right? And so you have to realize that, again, if you were to pull out a calendar out of 52 weeks, there's at least 40 of them that where there is some occasion where life's gonna come at you, a vacation, a birthday, a holiday, or whatever, where you are not going to be able to be 100%, and that's okay. It would be absurd to assume that you can be 100% every single day. That's not reality, right? You can be 100% of the time, 70% of the time, and then 30% of the time, maybe you're just 50%. But the difference in the ones that succeed the most are the ones that realize that it's not all or nothing. It's not, oh, I had a bad day. Well, I might as well just keep binging until Monday and start fresh again. That is not the right attitude. That is going to keep you stuck indefinitely. It is not the ones that go, well, I already had one glass of wine, so I might as well have the whole bottle. That's a bad, that, that's the, that, is a, that is a fixed mindset. That is not a creative mindset. That is a mindset of all or nothing. Or another example would be, well, if I can't be 110%, then I'm not going to do it at all. Hey, hate to break it to you, but, but, all or nothing, if I can't commit 100%, I'm not gonna do it all, is actually self-sabotage and procrastination disguised as virtue, but it's not actually virtuous. You're really just holding yourself back because life exists in the grays. You're not, this isn't an, an Olympic track where you're gonna get a three, two, one, go in a green light. That's not reality. The reality is, is you're gonna live in the yellow light. You're gonna live in the grays and you're gonna probably have the majority of your time be rough and tumble and you have to adopt the mindset where you're just gonna do the best you can every every day and that's all I can expect out of anybody, right? It's like, hey, maybe we have a goal of 120 grams of protein a day, but you had 100. That doesn't mean all is lost. It just means that we learn from our from our mistakes and try to do better the next day. Some, hey, maybe your, your, your knee's hurting and you can't do the squat portion of the workout well, instead of skipping the workout, we just modify it and do upper body stuff because that is good enough for that day. That is your best for that day. And that's the mindset of winners. And that's the, that's the, the attitude that my clients who lose 20, 30 pounds in their first 12 weeks with me have is they go, and I don't even have to tell them. They'll just tell me, oh yeah, um, you know, my ankle was swollen. And so I just did, I just skipped the leg part and I just did the upper body part. Is that okay? And I'm like, absolutely, that's okay. That's what I'm talking about. Like that's the mindset where you got to work around. We got to be nimble, right? Like life's gonna beat us up sometimes. We gotta be. We gotta. We gotta move with the punches and just keep showing up every day. Just keep showing up and doing your best. And that's how you're gonna win the game, right? You will have bad days. You will mess up because you're human. What matters is how fast you get back on the wagon.
It doesn't, it's, it, it, it doesn't matter if you have a bad day. Of course you're going to have a bad day. What matters is how quickly you get back on track. And that is the good enough is good enough attitude. Good enough is good enough motto. And you just show up and do your best every day. All right? Moving on. Number three. Boom. <sighs> they don't get defensive. Right? The winners, the people who are successful, the ones who crush it, they don't get defensive. Okay, if 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 you're in a program and the coach, and this is what I was alluding to in my intro here is like it challenges you, right? Like you can't keep doing what you're doing. Something's got to change. And so when the change is suggested to you, you cannot get defensive and defend your position because your position is wrong. Right. And that's just the reality. And that's what you need to accept. So you have to surrender surrender your belief systems understand that your belief systems do not serve you they are not correct in this realm if they were correct you would not be in this situation right and you have to accept that you don't have the answers you might conceptually know what you're supposed to do but until you've experienced it until you put yourself through it and you've gone through months and months of tracking and weighing and, de and deliberate effort, concerted self-effort, and you've transformed yourself, then you have the answers because you, you've embodied the answers. You've experienced it for yourself. You haven't just read about it in a blog and conceptually understand it. You've lived it. But until you've lived it, you have to surrender and accept that you just don't know what you don't know yet, right? And that's okay. But if someone in a position who does know suggests to you or gives you a program or you sign up with them, you have to be able to surrender your belief systems and adopt it 100%. Because otherwise what happens is we're clinging on to our past, we're clinging on to the old identity that we've had, that we've created as a coping mechanism to get us through stressful times. A, I, E, uh, food, alcohol, all these things, isolation, right? So now when someone's on your grill and they're looking at your meal logs and they're looking at your weigh-ins and they're giving you feedback and it triggers you because it's threatening the identity that you've created to protect yourself with coping mechanisms around food and then you get defensive and blow up about it, you have to realize that that is actually not you, okay? That is not you. That is, that is the ego. Right? And the ego loves status quo. The ego doesn't want you to change. The ego likes to stay in its little cocoon of security and safety. And by you being defensive is allowing that ego to take you over and speak for you as your representative. And so remember, we are not that. You are not that. You are the one who witnesses that. Right? You are the being behind that, that sees the emotion, that experiences the emotion. But don't get identified with it. And understand that the, the patterns and the habits that have gotten you here are, are, are the very things that your ego is going to want to defend when it's threatened, right? Because that is the identity you've created around it, um, potentially for your whole life, right? So you must surrender, you must accept that you don't have the answers, and you must come with a, with a, with a beginner's mind, all right? Become with a beginner's mind and just do the do. Just do the damn things, right? If you go, if you work with me or you work with another fit pro, trust that they probably know what they're talking about, right? Like if I have 40 clients that see, speak to me on a weekly basis and I've owned two gyms and I've had every certification under the sun and I've literally had 5,000 bodies go through a program of mine over the last decade, you, you got to accept that there's probably a few things that maybe I know that you don't, right? And so coming into this with the beginner's mind and accepting of the reality of what it's going to take to transform you, because we're not talking just body, we're talking we got to transform you internally first. And that internal that internal internal transformation is going to represent itself externally through your form, right? But it all starts with this. It all starts with getting your head straight, being humble, um, keeping your eye on the prize, accepting, surrendering, and then just showing up every day 
and doing the work. And some days you're not going to feel like it. Some days you will feel like it. But on the days you don't feel like it, you just got to do it anyways. No matter what the little gremlin inside your head is telling you, you have to trust that when you look back on a t- period of time, at three months, six months, nine months, and you've consistently done all the, the tasks, you've consistently checked all the boxes, you will be quantifiably better. You will be measurably happier, you'll be measurably healthier, and you will be visually better. Everything in your life will change. Your your relationship with yourself is going to change, and that's going to affect the relationships with others, right? And so we use food, we use nutrition, we use exercise as a as a as a microcosm for everything else in our life. We use it as a as a way to discipline us and to reset the script and to basically transform us via nutrition and exercise into the version of ourself that we want to be. But we can't talk about weight loss without talking about psychology and the pathology and the choices we've made up until that point to get us to the place where we have to lose weight, okay? So observing yourself, being aware of when you're triggered, being aware when you get that defensive knee-jerk reaction and trusting that like, you know, if you're defensive about it, it's probably because it's right. There's something, there's some truth to it, right? If there was no truth to it, if it was completely preposterous, you wouldn't get defensive about it, right? If, if, if you're six foot five and someone said, hey, you're five foot five, you'd be like, what? Bye. You wouldn't get triggered and be like, I'm not short. How dare you call me short? Because you would know you weren't. See what I mean? Not, no offense to my five foot five followers out there. You get what I'm saying now, right? If it's preposterous, you don't get defensive. If there's a little bit of truth in it, now I'm gonna get defensive, right? Okay, guys, so there you go. That was a mouthful. Uh, that was jam packed sesh. I love talking about this stuff. Um, comment, drop me a line. What do you guys want to hear more about? What What is interesting to you? Um, I'm here to. I'm here to provide answers for you guys. Um, If you need some coaching, if you are interested in losing up to 20 pounds uh, in the next 12 weeks or less, shoot me a message. Uh, Fitness, nutrition, accountability, everything you need. uh, Blow your mind. Uh, Again, you just don't know what you don't know. And um, this this will work. This will work. We guarantee everything. So, you know, good stuff. don't feel, don't, don't be afraid to hit me up. Don't be afraid to ask for help, right? If I can hire coaches, you should hire coaches. We should all hire coaches. People know more than us and we should learn from them. Okay, guys, have a fantastic Thursday. Um, I will see you all on the flip side and uh, looking forward to hearing from you guys. Peace out.